Hi. Good oh, afternoon. I used to see a lot of Damien when I was on economic development, but we don't usually see you up here. Uh, well, it's <laughs> uh, echelons of finance. Yeah, finance is it's usually too complicated for me, I'll be honest. <laughs> it's been that way today. <laughs> okay. But we're here to talk about 247, which is prohibiting discrimination based on genetic information. And this is just our first kind of walkthrough on this one. So um, we'll do that. And then we can decide either to go forward with it or to just ship it over to health and welfare, it is an insurance bill. So we might want to do that. Senator Hardy. Uh, I just wanted to let people or maybe Faith know that when you click on 247 under Damien's name, it comes up as 269. Thank you very much. I'll fix it. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So Damien, you want to walk us through this one? Sure. I'd be happy to. Um, before I start, uh, does this committee look at the document on their own device or do you want me to share it? Usually we share it. Okay, great. Every committee is a little different. So I know. <laughs> All right. Let me go ahead and pull that up. All right. Okay. So here's S247. This is based on uh, a lengthier bill uh, that passed out of Senate Health and Welfare right before the pandemic started in 2019. Is that right? 2020. Sorry, it's been so long <laughs> at this point, I can't remember uh, when, yes. Things when all of that started. Fun. <laughs> um, so this is a trimmed down version of that bill that focuses on the, the sort of core provisions of that bill. Uh, the very first two changes in the bill uh, in sections one and two are in Title 18 on the section covering, it, covering um, genetic information and testing or the chapter. Uh, the first would amend our definition of genetic information uh, to mean the results of genetic testing related to an individual or a family member of the individual uh, contained in any report, interpretation, evaluation, or other record, or the manifestation of a disease or disorder in a family member of the individual. Uh, and this definition is important because all of the other sections in the bill are going to cross-reference it. And the definition has been amended to bring it in line with the definition under the, the federal genetic information uh, Non-Discrimination Act or uh, GINA. So. Um, okay, but Damien, that B, the manifestation of a disease or disorder in a family member. Mm -hmm. Does that mean every time they ask about a cancer history in my family, they can't use that anymore? So what this what this means, and we'll, we'll get into it within the context of insurance, but yeah, what this means is that genetic information now includes that history of uh, whatever it might be. If there's a genetic, there's a genetic predisposition for a certain type of history or a certain type of cancer, then uh, the, a family history of that um, cancer is considered genetic information. Same as with things like heart disease, uh, where there's genetic predisposition, uh, substance use disorder. Uh, there's some genetic predisposition, I believe. There, and any condition like that, where there's a genetic predisposition, that sort of medical history in your, in your family is considered genetic information. Oh, okay. We will definitely have the insurance companies in. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, the, so the next section, section two gets into uh, 
the requirements around genetic testing as a condition of insurance coverage. And so the current... <clears throat> Madam Chair, I'm sorry to interrupt, yes. uh, Damien. I'm sorry to interrupt, Damien. But um, in, in the definition, does that cover, um, say, somebody gets a, what's it called, the uh, something 23 or whatever, the one yeah. of those... DNA test is that covered under those definitions? Because I've I've often worried that those companies sell sell your data the way a browser does and those kinds of things that that people unknowingly uh, effectively put their DNA information out in public. So, um, can you just help me understand if if that's connected to this? Yeah. So that is actually addressed later in the bill. Um, and the, the use of genetic information acquired from a direct consumer genetic testing company is, is prohibited uh, in certain contexts uh, later in the bill. Okay. So the genetic testing as a condition of insurance coverage, our law already uh, prohibits ge requiring genetic testing. Um, as a condition um, of a policy or prohibits a policy, an insurance policy from containing a requirement that an individual undergo genetic testing um, or uh, that the individual um, provide the results of genetic testing for a member of their family. Uh, what this adds is that uh, it, uh, you can't condition the insurance on the basis of genetic information of the individual that may be associated with a potential genetic condition, but that has not resulted in a diagnosed condition in the individual. So this gets into the chair's question. So if you have genetic information that indicates that you may have a heightened risk of developing something, you can't condition the insurance on the basis of that. However, if the individual has actually developed that medical condition, that can be something that you condition the insurance on okay. uh, within the restrictions of the rest of the law. Damien, is this life insurance specifically or just any insurance? So uh, this is going to relate primarily to life insurance in the bill. Okay. Um, the federal law already relates to uh, health insurance. That's what I thought. Um, and so this bill is focusing on uh, life insurance, but there are some more generally applicable insurance provisions. There's also uh, some reporting provisions for um, nonprofit uh, uh, health and medical um facilities that are under Title VIII that are affected. So we'll get to that in just a minute. So now we're getting into the insurance in section three, uh, 8 VSA 3702. I'm just gonna go to my notes since insurance is a little bit outside of my normal area of practice. So this is life insurance here that we're dealing with in section three. So a life insurance company doing business uh, shall not uh, issue a policy. The, the changes in one through four are just style changes for our drafting manual. Okay. And then in five, we get to condition insurance rates, a provision or renewal of insurance coverage or benefits, or other conditions of insurance for any individual on a requirement or agreement that the individual undergo genetic testing genetic information of the individual that may be associated with a potential genetic condition, but has not resulted in a diagnosed condition or the genetic information of an individual's family member. So it repeats those provisions from Title 18. Um, and so the, the issue, the, what this does for life insurance here is not only does it prohibit them from requiring an individual to undergo genetic testing, but it also says you can't condition insurance rates or the provision or renewal of insurance coverage uh, on genetic information that might be associated with a potential genetic condition, 
that hasn't actually manifested itself at this point. So, uh, The next piece here, subdivision B, just cross-references the, uh, the definitions that we added in Title 18. Subdivision C here says that notwithstanding the prior language, a life insurance company can condition rates or renewal or provision of insurance coverage or other conditions of insurance uh, on the individual's family medical history, including the manifestation of a disease or disorder in one or more family members provided that there's a relationship between the individual's family medical history and the cost of the insurance risk that the insurer would assume by insuring the individual. So this is a carve out in the life insurance category here, which basically says if you have a family medical history, uh, you know, say, say uh, your parents and your grandparents all had a history of heart disease, they could take that into account when they're determining your life insurance rate and the conditions of your life insurance policy. Um, but what they can't do is look at genetic testing um, or other genetic information when they're doing that. Doesn't that go against that first line that says any history and... Any yeah, so this is, this is a... This is just for life insurance. This is for life insurance, and it's a carve out um, from that portion of genetic information related to the individual's family member um, and the genetic information that might be associated with potential genetic conditions. So it's basically saying uh, you can't look at genetic testing, but you can look at documented medical history for life insurance. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's narrowing down what life insurance could potentially look at, um, but still leaving open the option of looking at documented medical history. And this is something that was the part of the committee's amendment when this passed out of health and welfare in 2020. Um, they added this provision in here uh, based on testimony from the insurers. Um, but of course you'll wanna hear from them on this issue. Yeah. Madam I'm Chair. Of day. Yes, Senator Hardy. Um, may I ask a question? Um, yes. Damien, um, the documented medical history, what, what specifically does that mean? That doesn't mean that they can get or request or require a patient's medical chart does it or whatever no i i think what um what i'm what i'm getting at uh probably inartfully is is the questions that you would get asked right now about uh did has anyone in your family suffered from you know heart disease or the following conditions when they're the sort of medical history that they would take uh when you're you're applying for the policy where there are certain things that they'll ask you, you know, has anyone in your family ever had condition X or condition okay. Y? Um, and then they'll base, uh, they may ask follow-up questions or um, base their, uh, the rate that you get, um, get quoted off of some of those answers. Okay, so it's basically the form that they make you fill out and the, but not, they don't request your medical records. Right, or if you've had a genetic test or your children have had a genetic test, um, which is becoming more common uh, or something like that, they can't ask you for those test results, but they can ask you general questions about your family's medical history. Got it, thank you. Yep, yeah, sorry to, muddy the waters there by using the term documented. That's, um, and then the final piece here, and this gets to Rep, uh, Senator Pearson's um, uh, concern from earlier, is this prohibits the life insurance company from requesting, requiring, purchasing, or using information obtained from an entity providing direct to consumer genetic testing without the informed written consent of the individual who has been tested. So 
only if you get the individual's informed written consent to the release and use of that information um, can they can they acquire that information and use it. All right, section four is a uh, general unfair methods of competition or unfair um, or deceptive acts or practices for insurance uh, in the business of insurance. And this adds, uh, it makes a couple of changes to the underlying law here. Uh, the first, if we go to page five, is we strike out the current language relating to genetic testing. Um, so currently the law says uh, it's an unfair or arbitrary underwriting action to make or permit any unfair discrimination by conditioning insurance rates, the provision or renewal of insurance or other condition of insurance based on medical information, including the results of genetic testing. And we're striking that language out where there's not a relationship between that information and the cost of the insurance risk um, that the insurer would assume. Um, and then what we're replacing that with is this new subdivision F here, which provides uh, that it's un an unfair practice to make or permit any unfair discrimination against an individual by conditioning insurance rates the provision or renewal of insurance coverage or other condition of insurance on a requirement or agreement that the individual undergo genetic testing, the genetic information of the individual that is associated with a potential genetic condition, but that has not resulted in a diagnosed condition in the individual or genetic information of the individual's family members. Um, and then the cross-reference back to the now universal definition of genetic testing and genetic information. Um, so that, that is new language bringing this into line with the protections provided under the federal law, uh, the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act. So, uh, and this applies across the board. The more, the more precise language that we discussed above with life insurance um, would apply to life insurance, although you may want to indicate except as otherwise provided in that section here um, as just a, a drafting note. Uh, the next here in the existing section on genetic testing, which already prohibits a, a requirement or agreement of an individual to undergo genetic testing, um, there uh, again, this is repetitive of the language above um, where we're just adding in the identical language here uh, to line it up with the federal protections. <clears throat> and then again, the same cross-reference to Title 18. The next brings us over to HMOs. Uh, so that's section five brings us over to HMOs. Uh, and this adds to um, the language providing that any nonprofit HMO shall offer non-group plans in accordance with section 4080B of this title without discrimination based on age, gender, industry. And we're adding the word genetic and the words genetic information and medical history, except as allowed by and we're correcting the cross-reference to 33 VSA 1811 F2A um, to correct that because those provisions moved a few years back. So this is a technical correction here on the cross-reference. And then we're adding the cross-reference to the word genetic information. Um, so the, the substantive change here is to add the term genetic information to the prohibited uh, bases for discrimination. Uh, the next section, section six, relates to long-term care insurance. Uh, the, the 
changes in subdivision B1 are just technical changes. Subdivision B2A or B2 adds substantive changes by adding the same prohibitions um, and, and protections to line up with the federal law here related to long-term care insurance policies. And then again, the same cross-reference to the definitions of genetic testing and genetic information. The next section, section seven, eight, and nine relate to uh, social and medical services. So uh, section seven relates to nonprofit medical service corporations. And they annually have to file a statement with the Commissioner of Financial Regulation um, to qualify for their tax exemption. And it has to include a certification uh, that they offer um, they offer their plans, uh, their medical service plans to individuals without discrimination currently based on age, gender, geographic area, industry, and medical history. And this would add genetic information uh, to that and then correct the cross-reference to 33 VSA 1811 F2A, and then add the cross-reference to the definition of genetic information in Title 18. The next change in Section 8 relates to hospital service corporations which again, to maintain their nonprofit status, have to file an annual statement uh, or to qualify for their tax exemption, excuse me, have to file uh, an annual statement that they operate on a nonprofit basis and without discrimination, again, based on age, gender, geographic area, industry, and medical history. And this adds genetic information to that list then corrects the cross-reference to Title 33 and adds the cross-reference to genetic information. And then finally, uh, Section 9 addresses 33 VSA 101, which relates to the provision of assistance and benefits by the state to individuals. Uh, and this adds to, so currently it has to be provided without restriction or discrimination on account of race, religion, political affiliation, or place of residence. And this adds genetic information to that list of non-discrimination provisions. Uh, and then section 10 is the effective date. Okay, Senator Sorokin. <laughs> Thank you, Damien. Um, I apologize in advance. I think I missed the first minute or two of your presentation, but in woven into your testimony was several times where you referenced federal law. So is this bill primarily to repeat federal law, but give enforcement powers at the state level, or are there many substantive advances here? So what it does is it expands on um, the federal Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act, or GINA, um, which currently provides uh, prohibitions against um, discrimination or uh, on, on the basis of genetic information with respect to health insurance and employment, among other things. And so what this is doing is, is expanding that uh, into long-term care insurance, life insurance, and then insurance generally in the state. And that's the big change in this bill mm -hmm. uh, is that it expands on the protections provided by the federal law. Have many other states done this already or to your knowledge? That was uh, the research that I did not get to today. Mm -hmm. um, what I was able to find is that in 2020, or that's the research I didn't finish today. What I was able to find though, is that in 2020 or 2021, 2021, Connecticut added uh, this language with respect to um, insurance for life, credit life, disability, long-term care, inju accidental injury, specific disease insurance, hospital indemnity and accident insurance here um, related to um, the genetic information protection. 
So they've added this protection to their law. And then Maine in 20, 2019 added the prohibition uh, on life insurance companies obtaining uh, and using information from a direct consumer genetic testing company without uh, the express written consent or informed written consent of the individual who's been tested. So two other New England states have done um, portions of this bill, um, but I don't know that either have done, has done the entire thing. And uh, unfortunately I didn't have enough time to finish looking through uh, the federal, uh, the, the federal government, um, the National Human Genome Research Institute has links to uh, a genome state uh, statute and legislation database that has information on this. I don't know how up to date that database is kept, but that's what I was using for my research today. Uh, and I'd be happy if the committee moves forward on this bill to, to do further looking through that database to find out who's enacted what at the state level. Thank you. Okay. And we will have EFR. Um, we'll have to find the life insurers. It's not our usual suspects. Uh, but I think I have several located in Montpelier. And we'll see if we can find someone that does long term care. Um, we can probably use DFR as a source for who we might contact. And probably should just send it up to human resources at the state level since it requires they do something um ask if they want to say anything anybody can think of anybody else we need to hear from let me know senator pearson yeah i wonder about um senior groups aarp or or related folks i mean this does strike me as something well worth considering given our aging population and, and yeah. frankly, the explosive data banks of DNA uh, out there. But um, I, I would love to hear from some consumer groups or, or, or folks okay. like that. Um, probably AARP, which looks at things nationally would be our best resource yeah although i'm reminded that they're an insurer so um, yes they are it'll be, it'll be interesting but but we at can least start they loan their name oh. um we could try the senior center the that's yeah the office on aging in vermont senator hardy thanks madam chair i believe you and i and perhaps senator lyons got an email from UVM Health Network, and they've done some work in this area, and they asked if they could come testify. I could be they, wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure we did. Um, yeah, uh, they most certainly. I don't know if I got if I got it. I haven't seen it today. Okay, it was um, a couple days ago. I'll I'll find it and forward it. Oh, uh, look, you. um, I know UVM testified in health and welfare, and it was their genetic specialist, and her concern was that people put off being genetically tested because they were afraid there would be ramifications of the, you know, if the results got out and she felt that genetic testing was a really good thing because if you knew you had a predisposition, you would get, might get tested sooner, earlier um all those kinds of things so um yeah we'll make sure she comes down Senator debray um i it may, it may be too academic but i was thinking there the uvm because of a wide range of people they have working and stuff like this maybe there's a bioethicist you know that is the right sort of person in terms of figuring out how you maintain this sort of data and rights. I mean, it's just an emerging area in terms of we can learn things that we never used to be able to learn. Oh yeah. Um, 
I, I know that the Vermont Ethics Network, because we hit them up to see if they'd talk to us about the um, securities uh, ethics. Remember the question that came from, um, uh, yeah, administrative rules on setting up an ethics system for securities uh, personnel, yeah. And they did, their response was they did primarily um, medical ethics. And I, Ed Mahoney wrote us a letter in uh, health and welfare and another topic, but he is a bioethicist that used to teach at St. Michael's. Those are, but I think the, and he's helped set up the ethics network. So they might be our best source for this. I don't, yeah, and we're looking at two issues. It's what does 23 and me or, you know, uh, do with their information? And then what we're really looking at is does the health insurance or the life insurance company get it at all? This says they don't get it at all, so we don't have to worry about how they store it. It's another step up to say, and I'm not sure it's in the purview of this committee, what is what are the restraints around what 23 and me and I don't know all the other ones that are out there. I know that one because my sister had our bloodlines run and uh, sent me the results. I'm not all Irish, but um, we will, uh, so we, we can, uh, and I'll just, Sandra, which one are you asking about? Which one of those two pieces? Yeah, I mean, or is it a third one I missed? Um, well, I think, uh, anyway, from the bioethics point of view, I just felt like that's a, uh, an expert neutral party. They're not selling anything. They're not even necessarily that closely connected to medical services, uh, you know, like delivering them. And the other side of the coin I can imagine is uh, if you can get tests that are truly diagnostic, and you know, does it uh, does it create an opportunity for adverse selection? And so, I mean, that's a legitimate concern yep. for an insurer. We're, we want we don't want people penalize for having information sort of leaked about them. But I, you know, I suppose it cuts both ways, right? You could find out something and say, well, now I'm signing up for that. And uh, once you know well, that you have we this have... position. So I don't know how you balance all those. But... Yeah, and that, that'll that be a good, we'll, we'll talk with DFR, we'll talk with the insurers. I mean, if I know I have a predisposition to die before I'm 40, and at 30, I go out and buy a million dollar life insurance product and I die. The rest of the insurance, you know, that's going to get figured into the cost of the rest of the insurance market. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll hear from everybody.